Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to create an effective and dynamic search app which displays search result as you type the keyword. We'll be using IntelliJ for our IDE and SendBuilder to build our user interface. Then a quick work in MySQL Workbench. Alright, we'll start with MySQL. I will show you our table and sample data. Here, I have a table named product. Let's go over the product table definition. Our product table has only six fields. It is more than enough for our needs. Then let's check our sample data. As you can see, I have already inserted 20 rows of sample data. Now let's create another select, but with fields on it. We're going to use it later. Description from product and execute query. All right. These are just sample data and you may use your own. They can be replaced by any value so long it matches the data type. Now let's go and open IntelliJ IDEA. This code should work with other IDE too. New project. And we're using OpenJDK 16. Name it product binder. First order of business is to rename our files here. Start with the sample.fxml. We'll rename it to product search.fxml. That's something descriptive. Good. Next, we'll rename the controller. Refactor name. Let's call it product search controller. Okay, good. Now we're going to set up our project structure. Need to add the JavaFX SDKs. And it should be where you save them. We just need these four, okay? And we need to remove that. Add my SQL J connector as well. Open. Apply and okay. Next, we're going to design our UI. We're going to open and use this FXML and Send Builder. Go to Send Builder. And open project. Look for that uh, FXML. Sample, there you go, product search at FXML. Open. And remove that. Replace this with pane. Search for that. Just drag it here. Adjust the size to 1080 by 600. Then add a table view. And we need to adjust the size as well to 1020 by 502. That's right about. Add the label. There you go. This position above table view. Set text as search product. Adjust the font size and style. Next, we need a text field. And just drag it here. Adjust the length matching the table view. Set prompt text as keywords. Let's set up the table view. We need to add more columns to match the number of fields we have in the table. Asset Texas ID next is brand. Add four more table columns. Look for that. There you go. Drag it here. Another one more. All right. Then model number, model year, product name, and description. You may adjust the column widths accordingly. It depends on your preferences. Now we're going to assign FX IDs to the objects we need. You may follow your own naming conventions, of course. Set table view FX ID as product table view. ID table column as product ID. Brand table column. Model number table column. Model year table column and product name table column and lastly description table column then here in the controller you can check the fx ids we'll set the controller class as sample that product search controller the controller we use in our project see that save it if you check the product search that fxml you will see updated the fx controller there you go and the FX IDs are sets as well. Now let's preview this and see how it looks like. Good. Search PlayStation 5. Looks good. We're now ready to proceed to the next part. Close this. 
Now let's go back to IntelliJ. Our next step is to create module in Voda Java. Right now we just need the JavaFX controls, FXML, and graphics. There is another one, but we will just add it later. Now let's go to main.java, change the set title to product search, then update the set scene using the layout size of pane and scene builder. Click the pane, then layout, copy the width and height. And change this to 1080 by 600. Now we're ready to run and see how it looks like. And there you go. Looks good. The way we want it. We're now ready to proceed with coding. The next step is to create a new class to handle the JDBZ operation. We will use this to establish connection to our MySQL database, this one here, so we can access this product table. Create a new Java class, name it database connection.java. Now we're going to add the last piece we need in our module info the Java. Requires java.sql. We need this for our database connection and operation. This is pretty basic connection class. I leave the database and user information blank. You will need to fill it up with what you have. I always keep my code readable as much as I can. For example, I use extra variable where technically you can code the database link as a single line if you really want it. All right, don't forget to fill up the database name and user info before you run. Next, we will build our SQL query, just a simple select statement with fields that follow this table view column order. Let's go to MySQL, new query, and select product ID, brand, model number, model year, product name, and description from product table. Execute this query. There you go. Our sample data, 20 rows and six columns arranged in order, similar to our table view. Next, we will create another class. Name it product search model at Java. This will represent our data. We will declare our variable that represents our fields or columns. It will have the same data type and order. That way when we generate our constructor, the parameters are in correct order as well. Now we just need to generate our getter. All right, next, our setter. All of this, okay, looks good. Finally, we are good to go. And code here in the product search controller. We start with an annotation at fxml and it was automatically imported above. We are going to annotate what we need from our product search.fxml using the fxid reset. These are the ones we assign in SynBuilder. This one, these are all of them. We start with table view followed by the table columns. Just need to import the table view class and we need to do the same with table columns after. Import the table column class as well. Then annotate the remaining table columns. Just copy and paste. Next, we need an observable list which allow our listener to track any changes. One of a factor in making our search dynamic and use our product search model as object data type. Then name it as product search model observable list. Assign as observable array list. Next, we are going to create initialize method, then implement initializable interface. If you're not aware, uh, initialize is the only existing method under initializable interface. We do this so the initialize method is called and executed after the controller elements were completely processed. Here implements initializable. 
then just need to override initialize method just to oversimplify, when the main, the Java runs, it loaded this and the controller initialize, execute the codes within it. Here we need our database connection and our SQL query. We can use the select statement we created in MySQL. This one, just copy it. Next, we implement try and catch with a SQL exception and a logger. And if you notice, the imports are keep growing. Now we execute query and handle the result. We're going to use while here. Just copy over the variable we use in the query. Also, the corresponding imports are added here. Now we just need to handle the query result and loop around it. Next. Now we're going to populate our observable list. We can do it here as a single line like this, but I prefer manageable and readable code. Even it will be multiple line of codes. So we're going to declare variables for our six fields and set them on their corresponding data type. Just copy them. And we only have two integer and the rest are strings. Now it will just simply lining them up on the same order, manageable and readable. We are just populating the product search model observable list with data from our query result, which is the 20 rows sample data. Let me put some comments here for reference. And in our SQL query as well. At this point, the set cell factory can be assigned cells of these columns. The FX IDs for table column has been set and annotated too. So we can use it here and instantiate property value factory for all the columns. We got our product search model for that. We'll just line up here the fields we need and work it out for each table columns. Model year, product name, description. I'll leave another comment here for reference. Now we're ready for our product table view. This one here. We're going to assign our observable list to our set items attribute. And just to refresh and simplify it, our observable list is populated here with rows from our SQL query result, which in turn we set for our product table view. As you recall, our observable list uses the data model we implement, which we apply to our table column sale value factory. Here, we utilize the structure of our model class which we reflect it back here accordingly. Now, let's run this and see how it looks with rows of data. And there you go. Our table view has been populated with our sample data. However, at this time, you can consider this just a static list. We are yet to tie this up with our search text field. Let's see how the search will look like. PlayStation 5. Well, of course, there's no PlayStation 5. Did you found any? Getting aside. Let's complete our code and bind this text field to our table view. We're going to utilize further list. This is another key component for our dynamic search. This is where our model class becomes useful and handy. As it became our basis for our data as well. And finally, we will work our way with a search text field. Keyword okay, text field. Make sure to import this here. 
nanatita so text property that add listener and we will use add listener here to capture any changes in our search text field and observable old value and new value and of course using lambda expression we will set the predicate for our filtered list and we're going to use that product search model another lambda expression we're going to have a nested if to handle our search first we're going to check if search text field is either empty blank or null and return true if it match at least one of them let's put a note here for reference we will convert our search keyword to lowercase to simplify our search we're going to start with product name then we'll check if there are any matches to our search keyword index of start at position zero hints anything greater than negative one means a match has been found or technically you can use not equal to negative one with similar result we return through here and filter data will change accordingly followed by description this will be the same for brand model number and model year will be need to be converted using to string in order to be included as well as you recall it is on integer type If no match is found, it will return false and it has nothing to display. Then we're going to wrap and sort our filter data, uh, sorted data. Now we're going to bind the sorted list to the product table. This way both are in sync. The table view display the changes we do to our filter data or technically the sorted list finally we set items for our table view this is loaded during initialization now let's run this and see the final output i'm going to search for apple and there you go it only shows rows with apple on it same for sony let's try that and we got it as you notice our search result changes dynamically it displays rows that contains our search keyword. For example, search this Xbox here, the display changes as you type. This search is so useful and user-friendly. What's happening here is that when you type in a text field, our listener take that as a new value. In our filtered list, we check it by row. If product name, description, and others contain that new value. If there's a match, table view display the matching rows, else it shows nothing. Because if there's a match, the return true then the filtered list will filter itself with only those matching rows and doing so will trigger the binding we made between sorted list and the table view and that trigger the table view to refresh itself and display these matching rows that way it makes the table view looks dynamic it refresh the display as you type whether there's a match or not if you have any question just leave a comment Alright, that's all I have. Thank you for watching.